Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Congratulations to everyone who joined the boot camp this week. You've actually got involved during a week where there's a lot going on. Uh, the first day or two could look a little bit overwhelming, but once you get the feel of it, uh, you're able to capitalize on some of the stocks that we had yesterday and specifically the stock run. Uh, just really good feelings uh, throughout the community yesterday and here on YouTube, quite honestly. We're getting quite a bit of uh, people saying that they're benefiting from the structure of what we're talking about, which I think is really the most important part of trading because once you eliminate the feeling that you're overwhelmed and there's just too much to look at, uh, then you kind of go into the market excited every day because now you're looking for something specific versus everything you could possibly be looking at, whether you watch the news, whether you watch Kramer, whether you watch Bloomberg, whether you watch Cheddar, whether you watch me, <laughs> and then there's just, uh, almost an overwhelming amount of, of choices that you have. But the single biggest thing that I try and help everybody focus on is just look at this, just look at this. And that's price action, whether it's order flow over a longer period of time, or whether it's reading the tape over a shorter period of time, which is actually what we're going to do right now. By the way, if you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Um, so my point is, we have a lot of people that come in are, are uh, swing traders and they're not necessarily um, looking to be in and out of stocks all day, which by the way, I'm, I don't do that either. And I don't, I don't teach that. <laughs> we definitely day trade and swing trade, but we're not looking to get in, get out, get in, get out. I, don't, I did that. <laughs> I did that 15 years ago. I don't do that anymore. Now we're looking for trades that we can build positions, trades that we can hold a little bit longer. We talk quite a bit about swing trades. Um, in the, in the uh, tape reading room during the day, which is actually what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about giving some structure to your price action. I want to talk about immediately finding trades that are uh, worth your capital and worth your time, uh, and hopefully timing some entries into those ideas a little better. In the private messages that I get, in the emails that I get, and even sometimes here in the comments in YouTube, um, it seems that quite a few people actually can find uh, reasonably good ideas, but they find them too late and they feel like as soon as they put on a trade, the thing moves against them and <laughs> they're frustrated. And then they're, they're, here's, here's the phraseology that I get because I want to make sure I get it right. Then they get stuck in a trade that they can't get out of, which quite honestly, that's bullshit. I'm sorry to curse, but that's bullshit. Um, there's no reason in the world if the market's open that you can't get out of a trade. You're choosing to get out of a trade, which means that you're trading from your ego and you're trading to try and prove yourself right versus trying to see your account grow and grow and grow. When you want to see your account grow and grow and grow, you simply have to do one thing really well, which is manage risk. And then you get to the other side. The second thing you need to learn how to do is hold your winners. So it's finding good ideas, managing risk, and learning to hold your winners. So I'm going to illustrate this point today in two charts that uh, one that we've had a really big winner in this week and you can see that the stock is very active and a stock that I actually love to trade on a regular basis when the stock's in play, which sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And if you don't recognize when it's not in play or when it's in what we call a box or when we, it's, that's the right price for that stock right now, uh, it's easy to get chopped up and feel frustrated. But here's what ends up happening. You end up trading stocks that you should not be in in the first place. You end up being frustrated in those stocks. You end up uh, losing your confidence in your ability to trade and you start to feel like, ah, what am I doing wrong? I'm missing something. And it's not the trade itself because you probably understand how to manage a trade. And, and we actually kind of experienced that yesterday uh, in Run Again and OSTK, which we've been trading a bit. Uh, FSLY had a little bit of profit taking yesterday and so did DocuSign at the end of the day. But my point is this. When you do a better job of picking the right stocks, when you do a better job, when again, it could be for swing trading, it could be day trading, it doesn't make a difference. It's easier on your heart. <laughs> it's easier on your heart after you put the trade on because now, now you're not constantly fighting. You put the trade on, it's moving against you. Put the trade on, it's moving against you. That happens prior to putting the trade on because you're picking the wrong stocks or you're picking them too late. It's very easy to look at stocks. What am I doing? I'm chasing this thing. And I got to get in, I got to get in, I got to get in. And it's already moved seven days in a row. And then you're like, what am I doing wrong? Well, what you're doing wrong is you're not asking yourself the question, what are the odds of this thing going higher today? Which if you listen to what I'm talking about every day, there's a lot of stocks that are really good ideas, but not necessarily a good idea now. In the order flow masterclass, what I say is pick a side, then pick a spot. 
but you have to determine if picking a spot is worth it right now. And you hear me talk about that during the day where I talk about, I still love the idea, but because of how far it's gone, I'd look to be day trading this if it meets certain criteria. So I'm going to show you that first in FSLY, what, I, what that looks like uh, and why I keep repeating it. And, the down, and if you don't listen, the downside of it. Uh, and then the other side, we're going to take a look at a couple of charts that um, did follow through um, in a big way. But I also want to look at a chart where it was active and then not active and how you can spot when it's not active and stay away from it because you need to be able to visualize what exactly do I want to see to feel like this is a good idea. When you see that, you take action. When you don't see that, it's super important to do nothing. If you read Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, Jesse Livermore, uh, one of the biggest parts of that book is he said the hardest thing to do is to be patient. And because the market opens sometimes, and maybe you're home, you're bored, or even if you're an active day trader and you're bored and you feel like you, you need to trade, you have to trade, that's the single biggest thing that you have to fight. Because trading while you're bored, trading for excitement, uh, and especially if you're in a room like ours where there's a lot of conversations and other people getting into trades, you, you, can, you can feel antsy, you can feel like you're missing out on something. But you know what? Don't feel that way. Use other people's calls to learn, to determine, and even say to yourself, is that a good idea? I see that John or Joe or whoever called that trade out, uh, is it a good idea? And if you look at it and say, yeah, okay, that is a good idea, or if it's not, then I expect you to type in and say, I don't understand what they're looking at. And that's how you learn. It's more important for you to find good ideas first than it is for you to make money immediately because money will come repeatedly, reliably, consistently, when you could first find good ideas. If you go in and start chasing the money first without knowing what you're doing, it's gonna be very frustrating and it's gonna be month after month and year after year. You gotta constantly be looking for a new system when the whole system's right there in front of you. It's the actual market telling you what to do. And that's the beautiful part of reading order flow and learning how to read the tape. You're not guessing anymore. You're just simply looking at what's going on and you're making a determination. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna show you what that means right now. So let's actually head over to the chart. And we're actually going to start out with Lulu. Uh, this stock is actually one that I trade on a fairly regular basis uh, when the stock's in play, which is, that's a big statement there, when the stock's in play. And you can see this longer term trend line uh, going all the way back uh, to March. But we're going to zoom past March. We're going to talk about this window here and then this window, which actually over here was into earnings. Um, so what you do want to see versus what you don't want to see. So first we want to talk about the clear visualization of what you do want to see, whether you're day trading or swing trading. We're going to break all chart patterns down to just two things. Okay, we're either going to have energy or we're going to have indecision. That's it. And then energy gets classified in a little deeper way. So these candles here are indecision. And you, you, you hear me mention those on a daily basis. And indecision basically means it's opened and closed in practically the same spot. So that means throughout a six and a half hour day, and again, I'm talking, this is all swing trading and day trading. We're going to apply this to swing trading here now, which is a big part of the boot camp. It's not only day trading. We're actually looking at longer term plays too. When you see indecision versus when you see energy, that's going to dictate in different ways how you manage that trade, how long you plan to hold that trade, if you plan to trade that at all. So if we can just do a very quick visualization of here, these two days are energy type candlesticks and what we call well bid, where you have higher highs and higher lows. So you have a big difference between where it opened and where it closed, where it opened and where it closed in consecutive days. Then you have three days of indecision. Then you have one, two, three, four days of what we call well bid. So over this period of time, you have four, three, and two. There's nine days of trading here. These two days, actually it's more than, we have four, three, yeah, nine. Two days of good, and when I say good, what do I want to see? What don't I want to see? Okay, energy candlestick. Okay, the next day opens up another energy candlestick. Okay, and if you're swing trading, what do you want to see again the next day? You want to see another energy candlestick. What don't you want to see? So energy candlesticks into indecision does not necessarily mean get out. What you don't want to see is this. You don't want to see consecutive energy candlesticks in the opposite direction, and we don't see that. So now you're still in the trade. What do you want to see? 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 And then indecision, indecision, and then energy in the opposite direction. So now you have these decisions to make on a day in and day out basis. How many days in a row did I have energy and how are the odds of getting follow through? So now we fast forward all the way to over here. 
we had a bunch of energy, but red energy with indecision. So I'm not looking to buy it here. Indecision, red energy, indecision, red energy. And this is technically what we call uh, also well offered, but it closed on a high. So not, so look at these two candles are not like these two candles. So you should immediately start to be able to see what do I want to see? What don't I want to see? And you do this from one day to the next, one week to the next, one month to the next. You're looking for consistency in the smart money, which is where the consistency will end up showing up in your trading account. It's when you trade this, where that's the right price. We go well bid, we go well offered. We go well bid, we go well offered. We go indecision, we do nothing. We have indecision and energy to the downside. Then we have indecision again. <laughs> if you don't recognize that, you're gonna be frustrated. So you had mostly selling here. You had a lot of indecision here from one day to the next where it just keeps alternating. Then you start to get a little bit of buying, closing above the open, although this is still indecision, that's still indecision. So very quickly, you should be able to see, look at those two candles. It's got this big wick on the bottom, another big wick on the bottom versus that. Look at how different that looks. This is the difference between when you're frustrated and doubting your ability to trade because you're not recognizing it versus recognizing this. Now, we're not looking at this after the fact because going into the day, and I'm gonna show you what we're looking for here. So let's just say for argument's sake, that happens right there. So now before the day even starts, you're going to be saying to yourself, okay, I know exactly what I wanna see. I wanna see it opening above the open. I wanna see it opening above yesterday and I wanna see it stay there. And the longer that continues, I'm gonna hold this trade. So then you go to the next day. Okay, it was green, although it opened lower, so now you gotta make a decision. What do I wanna see the next day? Perfect, still looks good, I wanna see that again. So now you're still continuing to trade that stock, still continuing to hold that stock, right? Now you go into the next day and you say, okay, I'm swing trading this stock, what do I wanna see, what don't I wanna see? Okay, that's not what I wanna see, you have indecision. So the point here is that the tape changed, reading the tape change. So now you need to say to yourself, I need to move up my trailing stop. I need to maybe scale out of some shares, or maybe this is going to be a pause where I need to see follow through. Very similar to what we had over here. We had three days of indecision. But watch this. These three days of indecision are different than these two days of energy in the opposite direction. So you got melted candles versus the wrong kind of energy. And I, you know, I'm kind of putting phrases on it right now. So you kind of get a feeling for what you're looking at. The reason you get frustrated more often than not is you don't recognize good energy and continue to trade that. And when it changes, you don't recognize when mostly negative energy and it's going in the opposite direction. You don't recognize when it's stuck in a box and that's the right price. And then indecision, 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 indecision. And now the stock finally shows some more energy. So today we'd be looking for what we want to see. So here's the, here's the thing. If this is today, similar to that, right? If this is today and we open higher, we expect that candle to be green and have good green energy. If it doesn't happen, we make other decisions. That's a big part of where people get in trouble. And that's where they say they get stuck. I didn't do what I wanted to do and I got stuck. And you know what? That's on you. If you don't go into the day saying, this is what I expect, and if what you expect does not happen and don't take action, so in other words, if, if you expect it to go higher and it doesn't go higher, you have to know what you're going to do. There's nothing wrong with the trade unfolding, looking great, pulling back, and then not doing what you expected. Now, also a problem that a lot of people have is they're trying to trade on a little bit too short of a time frame when you could be looking at a different time frame like this which is just one time frame higher and you're looking to swing trade. Look at how obvious the energy and indecision looks now if you're looking to hold the trade for a week or two weeks. Okay, so I want to get into one trade final here that where there's different types of price action now. We're going to drop it down to the weekly chart where we, this is actually the trade that we've been talking about this week and just a phenomenal, phenomenal swing trade from everybody in the community. We actually had a profit target up here and it exceeded the profit target and just an amazing day yesterday. So we had really strong energy. So now you can see we either had indecision or really strong positive bullish energy, positive smart money buying. Then the situation changed. So immediately right here, we're just gonna go right there and you can say, okay, still looks good. And then you say to yourself again, what don't I wanna see? 
I don't want to see that. I don't want to see indecision. I don't want to see lower highs. I don't want to see closing below the open. So now you're like, okay, now I got to step up and say that the take changed. What does that mean for me as a trader? You might scale out. You might tighten up your trailing stop loss. That's what I always teach people to do. When the tape changes, you need to wake up and say, okay, it's not doing exactly what I want it to do. What do I do now? And the answer to that is you first you sit up and you pay attention to you acknowledge something changed. Now you go to the next candle and you say, okay, I'm okay with that changing, but I need to see this again. I need to see some green energy again to feel good. At the very least, maybe indecision, but I don't want to see more selling. Okay, good. We come back with another one, right? Whew, we can relax again. Now what do I want to see next? Ah, oh, that's not what I want to see. So now two out of four days at selling. So now I'm going to really sit up and say, you know what? I'm going to either take some profits off the table here after this beautiful run from 16 to 42, which is a big move, or at the very least move up my trailing stop. What I'm not going to do here is add to my position or look for a new one because the tape is changing from one day to the next. And look what happens. Look how smart you are. And that stock just pulled back and you saved yourself uh, $6 in that pullback. But this now sets up the next trade. So now you're going back further to say, okay, the stock is really strong. The stock breathed a little bit. Some profit taking came in. Now we're going to look for this stock to give us a little bit of indecision, which on that pullback and indecision means that now the selling is now indecisive and we start to look for a new move in the opposite direction. And we get one more day of indecision. And last week into Monday, these are the two days that we talked about this trade for two full days and said, have it on your radar, have it on your radar. And then you get that, and you get that, and you get that. And that's all just preparation. Easier trades fall into your lap when you do the prep work. But you first need to know going into the day, am I expecting indecision? Am I expecting energy? Obviously, if you're looking to be a buyer, you want to see energy. And then you do the same thing on different time frames. And the more time frames that you see the same thing unfolding, those are the easier trades. The problem comes when you don't recognize that they're selling. The problem comes when you're trying to trade within three days of indecision. The problem comes when a stock is stuck in a box and you keep forcing your trades and it goes up, it comes down, it goes up, it comes down. Roku is actually a stock that uh, has fit that criteria for the last few weeks. We have a bunch of people calling it out who are new to the community and they have everybody else in the community saying it's not doing anything. What are you looking at in a nice way? <laughs> and then you stay out of that and you look, at, you look for some easier trades and that's how you walk through the community and, and, and right here in these videos too. So hopefully that explanation really gives you some structure to look at the market. And then don't forget though, the last part is actually understanding how to make money, which is what happens between entry and exit. And that's really what uh, being in real time together uh, really, really makes a big difference. So hope you enjoyed this video. It was, it was a pretty deep one, but uh, we covered a lot. I think it'll help. Have a great day, everybody. Subscribe to the channel and I'll speak to you soon.